Well, you can certainly sense the anticipation here in Glasgow City Centre. What a night of boxing we are seeing at St Andrews Sporting Club. It is time for the main event as Scotland's Cash for Out makes the third defence of his British Bantamweight title against England's Dwayne Winters. Hello and welcome to you. What a night of boxing we've had here in Glasgow. We've been very lucky. We've been spoiled. But it's time for the big one tonight. I'm joined by Gary Jacobs. Gary, what can we expect from Cash tonight? I think we can expect fireworks from Cash. This is the one that, is, if he wins this when he keeps his belt, and uh, I think he's got a very good chance of doing it and doing it early. He's trained very hard for it. And Cash is a, a world-class fighter. So he's in, it's the third or fourth British title fight that he's had. So if he wins this, he can move on from that. In terms of a challenge from Dwayne Winters tonight, I know a lot of people have said that they expect it to be quick tonight, but there must be there must be something oh, no. in him that he sees. Absolutely, there's always a challenge. The man's coming up here with nothing to lose, so he has everything to gain. So, no, he's definitely got a, ch uh, a chance. It's quite funny, actually, because a lot of my friends in Bristol have been on the text, on the phone, telling me about this boy that's coming up to fight for the British title. And I've just had to say, unfortunately, I'm in the other camp. <laughs> uh, but no, he definitely has a chance. And in terms of the future for Cash, because there's there's a lot being made about what he can do and, and who he can become. What do yeah. you think about him? I think he's a he's a, a dynamic young man. I think he can definitely go places. But he'll be thinking about this fight, getting this fight out of the way with. I think, yeah, he's definitely worthy of a either European or a world title fight. Uh, the fight against Kyle Williams back in April showed something quite special from him, didn't it? Yes, no, 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 he's there, he, he lives the life. Cash lives the life, he lives the life as, as, a, as, as a professional fighter, as you must do. It's, but the boxing is all in, it's 100% or nothing. And then playing in, or, or, or fighting in front of a home <laughs> crowd tonight. Kind of playing, we'll right, see. Okay. What, um, what, what does that do for a fighter? I think that gives him an extra advantage, it gives him an extra round, the hometown. The home crowd will all be shouting for him, so if he takes a wee lull and the, and the crowd get behind him, that, that, that brings him and pulls him through. But I don't think we'll see a lull from Cash, I think we'll see something quite special tonight. How important is it that he stays focused? Because in, in fights like this, whenever he's, you know, he's expected to win, how, how important is it that he makes sure that he keeps that focus? Well, I don't think he'll be thinking that at all. You know, that all, all the chat is he's expected to win. I think Cash will just be thinking on the job in front of him. When the bell goes, there, that'll be it. Or it's just him and the other guy. So, yeah, no, he'll be completely focused. And I think, I, yeah, I personally think, I hope he does it, it does well, and he gets to keep the belt. Whenever people are, are talking about that uh, around about you when you're a fighter, and there's so much expectation on you, well, how how do you manage to try and block that out? Well, as soon as the bell goes, you've only got one person in front of you. It's quite easy to block out if you're thinking about anything else. You're in a bit of trouble. So when the bell goes, he's only thinking about getting the job done. Well, speaking of the job done, let us hand, without any further ado, to our commentator for the evening, Nick Holland. Yes, thanks very much indeed. Looking forward to this one and a chance for Kash Farouk to join an elite group of British boxers winning a Lonsdale belt outright. He's got home advantage, but as you heard Gary Jacobs say just then, he's going up against an opponent in Dwayne Winters who has absolutely nothing to lose. No expectation at all from the Bristol man. He has struggled to get fights over the course of his career. As you can see, he's eight years older than the champion, and yet they've had the same number of fights. The stoppages have been coming for Cash Farouk in recent contests as well. Started off going the distance, but has really started to dig down on his punches. In contrast, the gas man only has one stoppage. That was his last fight as well, and that came on cuts as well. He's compact. Cash Farouk, a natural bantamweight. Dwayne Winters, a natural super bantamweight who has had to make the eight stone six limit today for the first time, he says, since he was 17 years old. It all adds up to Cash Farouk being an overwhelming favourite. But as you heard, Dwayne Winters comes in to this one with absolutely nothing to lose. Our MC for the evening is Craig Stephen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the big one. This is the Bantamweight Championship of Great Britain. The coveted Lord Lonsdale Challenge Belt. Would you please welcome, firstly, the challenger from Bristol, England, Wayne Win 
Richter. He calls himself the gas man. That's nothing to do with the day job. He is a fan of Bristol Rovers Football Club, whose unofficial nickname is The Gas. And he comes into this one on just six weeks' notice. That's not a long time for a British title fight. He's not known as a big puncher. He's never boxed out of the West Country. He's had just one fight in 13 months. He's a slow starter. He hasn't made this weight since he was a teenager. It all adds up. Alex Arthur to a guy who has no chance, and that makes him dangerous. Of course it does, Nick. I mean, listen, this guy is in a position now where he can possibly dethrone one of the best young fighters in the country for the most prestigious belt in the country. Don't tell me he's not getting in the ring fired up there right now. It is potentially a life-changing moment, this, for Dwayne Winters. He's been an area champion, but he's really been under the radar. He struggled to get fights, but when they got the call six weeks ago, his trainer and his father, Schema, just said, oh, we're taking this because this could put us into the big time. Taking the risk, going on the road, dropping down a weight division. But if you want to go somewhere in this business, you've got to take a risk. And Dwayne Winters is gambling it all tonight. If the gamble comes off, he is going to spoil a lot of plans here because he's going to walk away with that Lonsdale belt. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the champion from Glasgow, Scotland, the untouchable Akesha Barrow. Ask anybody, they'll tell you, the Lonsdale belt is the most prestigious belt in world boxing, and there is sure nothing is. like owning it. Alex Arthur's got one all to himself. That's the prize on the line. Yep. If he can pull this one off tonight, he gets one for keeps. In the cabinet. Every day I look at that belt. Every day I go downstairs, I, go, I walk past my cabinet, I look at that beautiful belt. It's unbelievable. Well, there's all sorts of talk about what the future may bring. But right now, the future is now for Cash Farouk, a young man who's very quiet, very poised, extremely respectful, takes on a different personality when he gets in the ring and he is defending that British bantamweight belt if he defends it again tonight that stays with him for the rest of his life well ladies and gentlemen once again a very good evening to all those in attendance here at ringside and a very warm welcome to you the viewers you join us live and exclusive around the UK on BBC Scotland. We are in the Radisson Hotel in Glasgow where Ian Wilson for Soul Tire Boxing Promotions is very proud to bring you 12 three minute rounds for the Bantamweight Championship of Great Britain. Proudly sponsored by Eden Mill of St Andrews and this is for the Lord Lonsdale Challenge Belt. All our officials at ringside have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Our steward in charge, Mr. Bernard Connolly, alongside Mr. Denny Trainer and Mr. Barry John Marston. At ringside, should this go the distance, our three scoring judges from Fleetwood, Mr. Steve Gray, from Gilliam Kent, Mr. Ian John Lewis, and from Birmingham, Mr. Terry O'Connor. Our timekeeper at the bell from Kilmarnock, Scotland, Mr. Jim Kirkwood. And when the bell rings, in charge of the action, a star referee from Liverpool, Mr. Mark Lyson. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in attendance here at ringside, and for those watching live across the UK on BBC Scotland, the officials are ready. The boxers are ready. Are you ready for the main event? <laughs> Introducing first the challenger. He boxes out of the red corner, wears blue and white shorts with yellow trim. He tipped the scales eight stone, four pounds and two ounces. He brings a near perfect record. 12 contests, 11 wins. One by KO, only one defeat. He is the Southern Area Super Bantamweight Champion from Bristol, Avon, England, Dwayne the Gasman Winter.
And across the ring stands the champion, wearing the white shorts with purple and silver trim. He's got the limit, eight stone, uh, six pounds, brings a perfect record. 12 contests, 12 wins, five wins inside the distance. He is the Scottish bantamweight champion, but tonight he makes the third defense as the bantamweight champion of Great Britain from Glasgow, Scotland, the untouchable Akesha Faro. Expect of you, stay professional and protect yourselves at all times, boys. Good luck to you both. Well, a really good atmosphere here as Cash Farouk gets ready to join an exclusive group of Scottish boxers to have won a Lonsdale belt outright. But can Dwayne Winters, the Englishman who comes in as the big underdog, spoil the party? We're about to find out. It's scheduled for 12. Farouk, known as a very fast starter, Winters admits that he tends to be a slow starter who comes on strong the longer a fight goes on. So Farouk will definitely look to try and put it on him early, knock him out of his rhythm, but the physical differences between the two are quite noticeable. He's so powerful and compact, a natural bantamweight Farouk. And uh, you do wonder how Winters has made this weight, and he came in rather surprisingly, Alex Este, two pounds under the limit, wow. considering he hadn't made this weight since he was a teenager of 17. It's unbelievable, that is a considerable amount of weight for a guy that fights in this weight division, because you know it's like two pounds is, it's massive, you know, it's like 12 or 15 pounds for, for a cruiserweight or a, or a heavyweight, it's just unbelievable. Right, he certainly yeah. started fast here, Farouk, as you would expect, but if Winters, who's got long levers, and really good range. If he can just box behind a jab, he can make life very difficult for Farouk here, but if Farouk can get inside, yeah. you can see him doing some damage. Yeah, well, it's not a matter of if he can get inside, it's a matter of when he can get inside, Nick, because, you know, Cash Farouk will put himself, you know, he'll put himself out there, he'll leave himself in positions, he'll leave his head in, just to get those body shots off, and it looks like he's clearly targeting the body really quite early, actually, um, and it's a really good tactic because, you know, over the 12 rounds, it's like money in the bank. You know, you hit that body enough against a tall, lean guy who's possibly struggled to make the weight. It's going to pay dividends, Nick, in the late rounds, and you know that all too well. And I think that that's what Cash Farouk's intentions are right now. I think he may have already softened up Winters. Winters is blowing a little bit. I think he's felt one of those body shots. Yeah. This is a hot pace for Rook is setting. He's mixing yeah. up his punches really nicely as well. Yeah, his punch variety is very, very good. He's, it always has been, but, you know, I'll say this again. I said it before. It seems to be improving fight by fight. He seems to be getting better and better, and, you know, at quite a rapid rate. And, you know, he, he, his variety, his volume, his punch picking is so impressive. And, and his and upper body yeah, movement his upper as well. Well, we noticed that last time, Nick, didn't we? That he was, um, that he was basically... You know, it, it, it was hardly touched. You know, he was his head movement was phenomenal. Look at that. Yeah, Winters is having a yeah, really it's so hard time impressive. With him here. He really is. And Farouk is picking some really nice body punches here. He just gets better and better every time I see this kid. He improves. And of course, let's not forget there is a oh, there you go, Nick. There's it's a body shot. Yeah, it's been coming. An absolute sickener of a body shot. Winters on the floor. Can he even beat this guy? I don't think he's going to do it. No. Nope. Don't think he's going to do it's it. He's done. Inside around. Wow. Inside around. You said it, Nick. You said it tonight before we even went on here. You said this fight might not last around. Well done, mate. What a genius. Well, very well done. Cash Farouk has just joined a very, very exclusive group. Alex yeah. Arthur's part of that group. Ken Buchanan, Jim Watt, who's here. Walter McGowan, Peter Keenan, the only man who have two belts. John Simpson, the most recent yeah. Scottish boxers to own a Lonsdale belt outright. Those body punches were sickeners. You knew yeah. well he done. was struggling early, Dwayne Winters. And sure enough, this is how it ended. It's a crippling left hook to the body. Yeah. Almost reminiscent of Julio Cesar Chavez, where he, he threw a mock shot first with very, very light intentions, and he switched to the body with, 
with violence and power. It was such a good shot. This kid, Nick, this kid is so impressive. He's so impressive. He's getting better all the time. That was absolutely clinical. It was methodical and it was thorough and it was brutal from Cash Farouk. Just a demolition job. Yeah. All the things we feared about yeah. Dwayne Winters, the late notice yeah, dropping down drop, to bantamweight. Yeah. weight. Yeah. Not had a British title fight. Yeah. And we had a private conversation about this earlier, Nick, and I said this fight possibly, probably wouldn't go past eight rounds. You said this could end them one, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. You said to me this fight can end in a round, and I was like, are you sure? Do you really think that? You said, Alex, trust me, this could end in a round. Nick, I've got to take my heart off here. Absolutely spot on. Well, he, he left until the last few seconds to prove me right, but <laughs> prove me right, he did. Well, all the talk now will turn to the mandatory challenger, and that is Lee McGregor yeah. from, from your part of the Unbelievable world. Unbelievable fight. Cash Farouk against Lee McGregor will be talked about a lot now. Whether it gets made is another matter. Nick, but it has to happen. The, 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 two, the two best young bantamweights it has to happen. in Britain right now it are Scottish. Has, it has to happen. It has to happen for Scotland. It has to happen for British boxing. This fight must take place. You've got two of the best young fighters. I mean, I've got to go back, like to, I would say me and Willie Lemond, you know, sell out 8,000 crowd in Brayhead, you know, and like, you know, that is the, that's the biggest fight since then. That fight has to happen. It has to take place, Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, referee Mark Lyson will bring together both boxers, and as he does so, please show your appreciation for both their boxers in the ring. Mr. Jim Curry with records and official time. Two minutes, 59 seconds. Round number one. Referee license stops the contest. The winner by countout. And still the British bantamweight champion, Ugasha Faro. Ladies and gentlemen, Sparing please give the applause going Winters, who was just the overwhelmed Glenn tonight. Winter. The odds were stacked against the gas man. And it was the gas man who blew out. And once that body shot had taken him down, it had taken everything. He was hurt before that. So Cash Farouk, who won this belt with a 73-second demolition of Dundee's Jamie Wilson, defended with a wide points win against Ian Butcher. Stopping Kyle Williams of Wolverhampton in five in April. Now a third successful defence, again a quick one. That Lonsdale belt is around his waist and it's around there for the rest of his life. That's his for keeps. Really impressive performance from Farouk this tonight. Knew exactly what he was looking to do. Went for the midsection. They'd done their homework, they knew Winters only had six weeks' notice, had to come down to bantamweight as well from his natural super bantam, could have been struggling at the weight. They thought, let's go and test the midsection, and Farouk went off thoroughly and methodically. It's not usually the first one that lands, you have to just build and build on it. And he'd already been hurt a couple of times, Winters, with body shots, you could see it in his face. And then when that left hook landed, with just seconds to go in the round, there was no getting up from that. So, it's a night of celebration for Cash Farouk. It's job done. Defended that British bantamweight title. Will it be Lee McGregor next, the Commonwealth champion? Will it be two belts on the line? Will they take him in a different direction? The one thing's for sure, the only way is up for Cash Farouk, who is clearly getting better and better. Hugely impressive tonight. And retaining and winning that Lonsdale belt for keeps inside around the official time. Two minutes, 59 seconds. Cash has cashed in. And that Lonsdale belt is his for keeps. Really impressive stuff. It'll be so interesting to see what they do with him next. Will it be Lee McGregor in a mouth-watering all-Scottish fight? Will they take him in a different direction? Will they start testing him at a higher level now? There is a sense when you win an Onsdale belt outright, give it up, relinquish it, job done, move on, go to a higher level. All sorts of options for Cash Farouk, but right now, this is his night. Let's go and hear from him with Connie.
Where is it now? For cash. Uh, congratulations, first and foremost. How are you feeling? I'm feeling all right, you know. And um, I was calm to go into the fight, you know, and that was it. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I'm emotional and, you know, made history. First boxer to do it. And uh, hope it long continues. Did, it, did you expect it to be so quick? No, I didn't. I thought I was going to go 12 rounds. It's a boy coming down a way. I thought it was going to be a tough, nice work for me. But I just showed my class in there, and I'm sure some levels above that, definitely. Alex Arthur's obviously here with his former world champion. Alex, what have you got to say to Cash? Just Fishing outstanding. He just, every time I watch him, he gets better and better. Every single time I see him, he improves. And he improves in areas where, like, you don't really see young fighters get better that quickly, that often. His head movement, his patience is unbelievable. His punch picking now is becoming exceptional as well. He sets up his shots impeccably. Like that body shot was, it was almost perfect. A little tappy right uppercut just to confuse his opponent, bring his hands up, switch to the body in a half second. So I'm so impressed by him, he's so good, man. What makes you different, Cash? I think it's my dedication, my hunger. And I want to make something on myself. That's always been at the age of 15. And you know, that just, that separates me from the rest of the boys, you know. Is this, you get dedication, then you get me. <laughs> And, and Ian Wilson, of course, you uh, manage cash. And Alec, um, Alex, if you could make up uh, Ian for the moment. But yeah. tell us, what, what's next for cash? Well, Lee McGregor, of course, has been mentioned. I'm just, I can't get over tonight. I'm just so over the moon for him to win the Lonsdale belt outright. He's done it in 11 months, and he's just getting better, better every fight. It's remarkable. You know, it's absolutely remarkable. It's he's unbelievable. Worked with cash from the very start. He's a joy to work with. I think this guy's a limit with him. I definitely think he's the number one bantamweight in the country, you know, in, in the I, UK I at the moment. So of, A lot of the uh, fans out here will want to know, though, what, you know, do you talk about the sky's the limit, but what, where's next? What happens? Well, listen, I think he's, I think Cash is certainly above domestic level. I think he can go to world level as well. There's another young man that's standing in the, the wings here at the moment, the Commonwealth champion, Lee McGregor. So hopefully we can all sit and talk. That'd be a massive fight. Cash for out versus Lee McGregor. I mean, you're talking I mean, to go back a big Scottish fight as him. You go back to one of Alex, probably. You know, yeah. you know. No, probably, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But I say, listen, we'll all sit down as a team. I just really want to take in tonight. I'm still in a wee yeah. bit. Cash, just, what would you make of that? What the stoppage or? Or no, uh, an opportunity to fight Lee. No, definitely. I think he's made mandatory for the next of the the next fight. So I'm ready whenever they are. You know, and uh, but obviously it's a business, as you know. But obviously, you know, we need to see. We got won the British, alright, but. For me, I'm on fire. I'll fight, you know, whenever they want. And uh, I want to see my honest opinion. I like the end of the year. I know Lee wants it as well. Lee's a good friend of mine, and we're good pals. Well. There's no, there's no beef, nothing like that. I've not got no nothing bad to say about him. He's not got nothing bad to say about me. And we just want the fight to get on. And but, you know, it's just me and him. We want the fight, but it's down to the management team. They need, they need to sit down, and discuss it, and uh, yeah. you know. And Alex the knows behind the scenes. It doesn't work like that. Two fights yeah. a fight any day of the week, but it's down to the management. Well, actually, we've got Lee here uh, yeah. with us tonight. If um, we can, here he comes as if by magic. Lee, you've heard you well you've heard the uh, the chat. If you, I don't know if you can hear it over this noise uh, inside the Radisson, but there's opportunities to chat between these guys. Would you like to fight Cash next? Oh no, I think I've made it no secret that that's the fight I want, and I think Cash wants that now as well. It was clear that they wanted to win the belt outright. He's won it outright now. He's made history, and it's a great achievement. And He's done well, and uh, I think it's time now to give the, the Scottish boxing fans what they want. Uh, totally agree. East versus West. Yeah. Uh, British and Commonwealth titles as well. It's, it doesn't happen very often, and, and I honestly believe it'll be a, a fantastic fight, and everyone's in for a treat, definitely. Well, it's been a special night tonight, of course, of boxing. You've been watching. From what you've seen so far, what makes you think you can beat Cash? I just... I just believe in my own ability, um, no disrespect towards Cash, he'll think the same, he believes in his, his own ability. I think the, the Scottish public are, are really going to be split down the middle on who they choose in this fight, and that's why I think everyone's so intrigued in it, because it genuinely is probably a 50-50 fight, but I do believe in my own ability, and, and so will Cash, so may the best man win when it happens. Yeah. Yeah, same, same what Lee said there, you know, I don't need to repeat myself, and leave, you know, what Lee said there, and it's the same thing, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Lee, and, I think the, we want to get what the public want. You know, I think obviously Lee knows his, you know, the management need to sit down and discuss it. And it's a business end of the day. And yeah. then Lee see what, you know, I mean, what they're going to do behind the scenes. But I won, I won the fight, so does Lee. And we want to give the Scottish fan what they want. And listen, it's two banter, it's we're the same age as well, Lee. 
we would grow up in the Scotland team and you don't get that in Scotland, you get that in England quite a lot, but not in Scotland. Yeah. It's a rare, yeah. rare occasion, believe me. And, and both of us are good, good, you know, I mean, both of us are cracking fires and Lee's a cracking fire as well. This is this is probably the best fight that I can think of, like, like ever in Scotland. Like, he, like even since, like, me, while I'm in Craig Doherty, like, Ken Buchanan, Jim Watt, that is that level. This fight is that level. And I think it would be an absolute robbery to the public if these guys don't fight because the both of them are exceptional. You know, they're such good fighters that it's, it would be a travesty for this fight not to happen. Well, Ian, if we can bring you in a little bit from your point of view, and I know it's difficult to take all this in this evening, but right, yeah. and, and it's about tonight, let's not take away from that. But when can the fans expect to see something like that? I know you have to talk, but what, when are we talking? Listen, we and Cash need to sit down and let them take in tonight. And uh, we all know each other, I know Lee, we know all the teams, everybody can work together. So yes, it's a fight that definitely can happen. So we just now need to sit together, get around the table, make it happen for the people, that's it. Well, you heard it here first, there's the possibility of a massive Scottish fight, East against West, Cash Farouk against Lee McGregor. The prospect of that is mouth-watering. Back to Nick. Yes, that one really is one to look forward to. Can it be done? Let's hope that boxing politics will not get in the way. It's one that has to happen. And many, many years ago, we saw Jim Watt and Ken Buchanan go head to head for the British title. Both of them, of course, world class. Just because somebody loses, that is not the end of their career. Far from it. If uh, Cash Farouk and Lee McGregor do get together, one of them wins two belts, but it certainly won't be the end of the line for the loser. These are two young, hugely talented prospects. Too early, realistically, to talk of them as world-class fighters. But the potential is there. The upside for both is huge. Let's hope they can get it on, because these are two future superstars for Scottish boxing. Let's get back to Connie. Yes, what an evening of boxing we have already had. A very, very special undercard tonight. Scotland against England uh, again. Let's have a look at Boris Crichton when he took on Daryl Sharp. Well, this one's scheduled for six. It'll be interesting if it goes the full distance as well, because Crichton tends to get them out of there early. Getting Daryl Sharp out early. That's a tough ask. Round one, scheduled for six. The interesting thing here, though, Alex, is that while Sharp is very capable of looking after himself, and we've seen plenty of that ourselves recently against uh, John Doherty, but uh, that's usually at middleweight and super middleweight. Yeah. Here he's stepping up to light heavy, yeah. which is Boris's natural tent territory. It is, yeah, but I mean, I guess that actually probably um, is walking around normally in like around the light heavyweight class all the time, so he probably has to drop, I mean, he probably had to drop a little bit of weight for the Doherty fight, but, um, like, look, you know, let's be honest, like, John Doherty may be a level above Boris Crichton. I think they were amateur teammates, um, both southpaws, um, you know, but John Doherty, a, a well-renowned, you know, Scottish amateur champion um, and games uh, medalist as well. And, you know, if Archie Sharp can take um, John Doherty to the distance, I'm quite sure he can take Boris Crichton to the distance. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel. That would be the expectation, yeah, yeah. because as, as, as we said, we saw Doherty just throw everything at uh, Sharp for two yeah. rounds and then Tony Simmons' yeah. trainer just, you saw him say, just, yeah. just, 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 just take your time. Yeah. Yeah, You're yeah, not going to get him out. Of there. Get him out. You know, learn, you know, absorb what you can. Um, you know, work on some of the stuff that we've been practicing in the gym, all that kind of stuff, which which is the kind of things that you have to do when you are on that climb to you know professional championship level. But you know, I would be massively surprised if Boris Crichton stops uh, Archie Sharp and John Doherty could. It would be a big, big shock. Yeah, and personally as well, I actually think physically, John Doherty is is probably. Um, is probably physically um, bigger than Sharp he's a big, uh, uh, than, than, than Crichton. I think, yeah, yeah, he's really, yeah. really big. I think he's in the region he's 6'3", and, you know, I think he's probably got a natural body weight and maybe around the 85 kilo mark. So you would think that um, if he can't stop him, I can't actually see how Boris Crichton can stop him. Yeah. Oh, Boris has stopped everybody that he's faced so far, and that's yeah. why I think that the, that the call went out to yeah. Darrell Sharp, because... Yeah. It's great for the ego if you uh, knock everybody over, but you don't necessarily learn much. Now he's got to go up deal. against somebody that's very, very tricky and he's going to have to work out. 
yeah, yeah. Again, as well, um, a fellow southpaw. So there's different dimensions there as well. Um, can he get the jab off as easily? Can he, can he land as many counter punches against someone who will naturally maybe sit on the back foot a little bit and wait on you to lead? So um, there's de there's definitely different um, situations here that that Boris Crichton's going to find himself in that he's never been in before. Bases himself in Glasgow these days, moving down from Aberdeen, which is home from when he was 12 years old. His mother moved to Scotland, out of Scott. And, uh, that was a big culture shock for Boris. Toughened him up physically and mentally yeah. as well. He really was on his own, had to just uh, fend for himself. <laughs> Took his time, didn't rush anything there against Daryl Sharp. And you see that ground from Daryl there, um, walking back to his corner, looking at his corner, and that's that look, Nick. That, uh, uh, that a classic journeyman pro gives his corner after it, he's been, uh, you know, through a, through a round with an up-and-coming guy, and he's basically saying, don't worry about anything. We've got this tonight. Yeah. You saw it there as well, didn't you? It was like, yeah, I'm happy, I'm comfortable. Nothing to worry about here. Well, he was stopped just the one time by Liam Williams. That that was no yeah. disgrace as Williams, no, although no, a middleweight no. is yeah. a big hitter if Fantastic Liam catches puncher, you, you're in yeah. trouble. Yeah. One of the really impressive things about Liam Williams as well is how he can he sets traps so well. And he puts pressure on guys with his feet. He doesn't even punch, he just puts them in a position where they feel under pressure. Round two then. Boris Crichton looking to try and uh, solve the puzzle that is Daryl Sharp. The Englishman from Middleton in Greater Manchester there, just a little shake of the head, saying, nah, 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 you're going to have to do better than that. And Boris, the big puncher, is going to really have to be patient and methodical. Take his time here if he wants to try and uh, catch him. Yeah. Well, Nick, uh, like for that, um, you know, for that, for that position that you're, you're Boris Crichton, and you're, you know, you're looking at Daryl Sharp. How do you open him up? How do you, how do you put him in a position where you see a gap that you can exploit? That was nice. That was nice. Yeah. Surprised him with just a, just a backhand lead there. Right. Okay. Right. But we're talking about, you know, like landing shots that are really going to get his respect, it's something that he's maybe not quite experienced before. I mean, and Daryl Sharp's probably experienced everything he can experience in a ring. So thinking of it like that, like how, what can Boris Crichton do to open up Daryl Sharp to make him feel like he's under massive threat? You know, it's that's really difficult. You know, you're like right away, you know, you've, you've been watching boxing your whole life. You can't think off the top of your head how he can put him in a in a situation where he can land a huge shot and really make an impact on him. You know, you, you just can't, can you? And, and every time yeah. Boris looks to land a power punch, he's going off with that right hand again, that backhand lead, which might yeah. just have some success, but every time he does land a power punch, or tries to land one, uh -huh. Sharp's just stepped out of range like yeah. he did there, or he's got yeah. a glove up, and then yeah. he gives him a little shake exactly. of the hands and say, no, yeah. he's messing with his yeah, mind as much as he yeah. can. There's a good jab yeah. from Sharp as well, look at that, nice yeah. and crisp That was right, don't drop your hands on yeah, me, kid. Yeah, yeah. You're going to learn the hard way tonight if you if you do things like that, yeah. And you know he's probably sent that signal across already that to Boris Crichton that you're not going to stop me tonight, pal. So just get the rounds in and be sensible, you know, like that kind of like it's like a physical conversation, isn't it? it really, is. it is, yeah. it really is. He's Crichton looking to land those jabs, and even though Sharp was in his own corner, he was yeah. under no pressure. There's another little shake of the head. Like, yeah. no, no, no. That will faint, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Crichton working for different angles, leaving himself a little bit exposed as well on occasion to like a straight shot um, from from Sharp, just like leaving himself in a position where he can be tagged back. He, Probably something to think about. Something, something that after this fight's over, he can go back and look at and say, okay, after I'm finished, um, maybe throwing a, you know, a, a body shot, for example, you know, just get the hands back up or put yourself in a position where you know you can defend, not leave yourself exposed and your chin like out to dry because, you know, there is guys that will exploit that. That was a pretty decent round for Boris Crichton. He managed to get through 
with some good, clean, single shots. And although we've got all the uh, kidology going on, there well, he is taking those, uh, especially those right hand, those backhand leads that Crichton was throwing at him. Picked him off a few times there. I, I like the patience. OK, he dropped his hands and got caught a couple of times. He'll, yeah. he'll have to he'll learn the hard way there. But I like the patience and the method about Crichton in, in, in this fight so far. Well, I think he's now... I think he's now... His thought process is now... I'm not going to knock this guy out. It's as simple as that, you know. So what do I have to do? I have to find ways where I can score lots of points, put myself in a position where I can hit him and he can't hit me back, and just get the rounds in. The, the, the message has been sent. You know, he's no longer trying to score a knockout. You can just see it now. Round three, then. Boris Crichton. Trained by Craig Dixon, who uh, also trains Cash Farouk, who will be looking to uh, secure a Lonsdale belt outright later on tonight. So he's pulling double duty here, and Dixon, an old pro himself, is certainly uh, smart enough to know that Boris just has to be patient and careful here, not take any chances, not rush to try and get the highlight reel knockout because it's probably not coming. And you do sometimes see that with young and inexperienced fighters that are on a knockout streak. They go hell for leather, and if it doesn't come, they start getting frustrated and losing their way and ending up looking quite bad. John Doherty was on the way to that and, last and, week. And yeah. Tony Sims, his trainer, yeah. just, just yeah. basically went through the gears downwards with him and just said, dial yeah, it down. Experience, pull it back. Yeah. You know, you could just see it, couldn't you? I mean, totally. you could see After it as well. two rounds, yeah. Tony Sims, just, you could see it just yeah. said, stop. Yeah. It's, you're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just concentrate on your yeah, boxing. You can, you can see the frustration in John Doherty's face. And, yeah. You know, a, a conversation going on between two guys, and he was basically telling him, look, calm down, buddy. You know, you're not going to knock me out. Oh, Crichton's maintaining good focus here. He's trying to rough sharp up a little bit. He's got that dig as well, Crichton. Nobody's... Uh, Heard the bell for round four against Crichton up until now. That's nice, nice left hook, and then immediately Sharp just covered up. The hook got blocked, but yeah. the, uh, the right hand following straight did not get blocked. Yeah, it got through, didn't it? Yeah. And his mark, well, I think his mark was just a swelling under his Sharp, eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it always brings something back, Yeah, he it? does, yeah. Keep them honest. Good right hook and a left cross from Sharp as well, but Brighton, now in a sort of, you know, he's in a bit of a comfort zone now. If he can keep piling on the pressure, um, we might see a few changes here, but no. Again, it's the right-hand lead that's uh, caught Sharp by surprise. This time it was an uppercut. Oh, nice body shot getting in yeah. there again with the right yeah. hand. There's another one. But I must say, um, Boris's attacks are a little bit predictable. And, you know, to, to, to get someone like Daryl Sharp's hands up, so you can switch to the body. Got to be a little more cunning, a little more, a little less obvious, you know, to, to open his, open up his guard. Yeah. But he is a four-fight novice. He is learning on the job. Little smile over there for, for Daryl Sharp, as if to say, you know, don't worry about me, lads. This is this is fun. Good, good right hook lead for Boris Crichton, and it was, that was well picked as well. When he's led with that right, yeah, he's had a lot of success. Yeah, he has, yeah. There's been a little dip in the knees before he throws the shot, maybe just throwing that off a little bit, bringing the hands down and landing that shot um, on occasion now. A bit of damage up in the, uh, up in the scalp Bottom there. 10 seconds. Seconds out, round four. 
round four then. Daryl Sharp looking around to make sure his corner had cleared before he came out there. Interesting, Alex, and I'll, I'll, when it comes to technique and boxing knowledge, I will bow to your wisdom every time, but you were just saying there in that last round, he needs to be cuter and cleverer, yeah. Boris, with his, with his attacks. For uh -huh. me, I've been impressed with his patience, his method, the fact he's not rushing anything, the fact that he is getting success with the right-hand leads, yeah. because Sharp, let's not kid ourselves here, Sharp can make you look really bad, yeah. right? And doesn't look bad tonight. No, 100%, like, like I mean, that's... Absolutely accurate. I mean, I know that me and you disagree on almost everything, <laughs> but on that occasion, yeah, you've got to say, yeah, I mean, like, in terms of, you know, like, Boris's opportunities have been so little that he can't really, yeah, patience, like you said. I mean, I'm trying to look for a way around making you sound um, um, less. Um, intellectual and the and the art of boxing and me, but I really can't in this situation because <laughs> well, that's a rarity. <laughs> because you're so you're so spot on with that with that quote. I mean, just how can you? It's um, you know, yeah. If you're going to say anything about what's happening here in the ring in this fight, it's it's Creighton's patience, and you yes. and you you hit on the head. So yeah, there's not really that much else I can add. And you can see the fact that he is actually looking for. Um, for ways that he can yes, like find a way through, right. it's, yeah. it is really impressive. He's not just plodding through and no, taking the situation. He's not. looking for something. Yeah, which is leaving himself open once in a while. And Sharp's clever enough just to pop him one, just to let him know he's still there. But again, he's keeping the pressure on. Got uh -huh. through with the right hand. Did you see yeah. Sharp's reaction? Yeah, that uppercut got through. Looked yeah. at his corner and said, "No, nothing else is going to. Nothing else is going to get it through. One and done. One shot." So Boris Creighton now is trying to pull. Um, Daryl Sharp's hands down to get his shot, so he's got a really tight defence, he's covering up his head really, really well. So Boris is now pulling those gloves almost like down so he can try and clip a shot around the ear. I think it's became uh, pretty popular since Lomachenko was seen doing that a few years ago. But I think that um, Crichton's best best bet throughout this fight has been targeting the body. As he did just yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he's moving a little bit late in terms of targeting the body, but... You know, he's in a situation now where he's he's catching on, Nick. He's catching on, he's learning, he's, you know... It, you said it the other week when we have seen Archie Sharp, John Doherty will be learning more and growing in experience exactly. more yeah. by what's happening right now than any other fight he's ever had. And it's exactly the same here for Boris. This is a great learning experience for him. Well, he's already gone into uncharted territory here, Boris. Never have gone beyond three before. Nobody's been able to stand up to him. But Sharp, <laughs> is that really the best you got? I'm just trying to mess with Crichton psychologically. It's a nightmare opponent, Daryl Sharp, because he can make you look so bad if you let him. He's capable as well, he did win an area title fight. They don't give those away easily. Wherever he goes, he always earns respect. Uh, this is a guy, we talk about these guys, they got the kit bags packed permanently. And Crichton, I think, was well prepared for this fight by Craig Dixon. Round five it is, I don't think Craig has said to him, you've got to go out there and get the stoppage. It's just, take it if it's there, but don't rush anything, and he hasn't. My only other question to you, Alex, is um, Boris. That's not a particularly popular name north of the border, <laughs> is it? He, he's got to do something about that. It's popular in Russia, isn't it? Uh, and in certain parts of Westminster, but not yeah. around here. Switch from body to head there. From Crichton. Nicely dealt with. By Sharp. He's just. He's had that smile playing on the edge of his mouth the whole fight. It's, it's, all, it's almost a mocking smile, isn't it? It's yeah. Like, really? You, you, you think you're going to trouble yeah. me? 
Very similar to the, the tones that he gave John Doherty, wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> very, very similar. I don't think I've ever seen John Doherty in all the time that I've known him and seen him box so frustrated. Yeah. And, and like, physically uh, physically upset that he couldn't do anything he wanted with an opponent. And, uh, you know, he's had a little bit of that, like, you know, he could do much as he pleased with some of his previous opponents. But uh, with this fellow, different ball game. Well, that, that for me is what's impressed me about Crichton so much. As I, as, as we've said, he'll, he'll 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 drag you down levels. Will Sharp, he will drag you down. But Crichton has stuck to his task very well. He's been creative. He's been patient. Yeah. He's thrown punches. He's yeah. stayed on the offensive. Yeah. You can't argue with that he's, at he's, all. He, he's never looked like a guy running out of ideas. He's not going to get through because that just doesn't happen. And again, Sharp. Sharp wants him yeah. to get drawn yeah, into a tear-up because he'll make he him does, miss. Yeah. And it'll also leave Sharp in a situation where he can actually come back with something he meaning. You know, because he, you know, Daryl Sharp's not the kind of guy that goes looking for that. But if it comes to him, we've seen it so many times, yes. haven't we? And Crichton keeping the pressure on, making this ring small, cutting off the, uh, the angles, forcing Sharp to work. That's a good lead, lead right hand there, Mick. One of many. Very, very good lead right hand from Boris Crichton. Very oh. good. And I tell you, Sharp's never learnt from that. He's been throwing those pretty much all fight. And Sharp does not react well to them. Ooh, takes head with the right hand there, Crichton. Left himself open. They like that in the Sharp corner. Well, that was all he got through with. Still sharp, taunting him, chatting away. Well, there's that right hand lead you were talking about. Really well picked. You know, he just stepped across, weight went on his right foot, popped the shot out. There was that right hand that they liked in the sharp corner. Yeah. Right, has been caught with a few right hands tonight. Just another day at the office for this fella. Last round then of this six round of Boris Crichton. Originally from Aberdeen, now based in Glasgow. Has uh, successfully navigated the first five rounds of this one. Just a case of getting the job done without making any silly mistakes now. Do you think it's a good idea that he's moved himself down to Glasgow? I mean, Aberdeen is not the uh, hotbed of professional boxing. He's, he's yeah. going to be more in the mix here, isn't he? Yeah, certainly another boxing capital of the world. Yeah, I think he's um, probably made the right choice in coming um, coming um, southwest. I think um, round about um, you know round about the Glasgow area. I think there's there's a number of guys in his weight class that he can spar with. And of course, next Scotland's a really small country. He can travel all over. He can get a bit sparring. Glasgow's a lot more um, central, obviously, than Aberdeen, so you can often get around a little bit more and get a little bit more training done. So, but you know what? And I, I bet you probably agree with me on this. It probably wouldn't do Boris Crichton any harm to start getting around some gyms in the UK, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Wouldn't Absolutely. It? You get know, some, just like you know, you, good sparring. Yeah, you can see the potential. Yeah. You know, everything's there. One thing you would say that Boris Crichton was lacking was just like maybe a bit like variety, you know, and maybe going around the gyms in the UK would help him so much. There's so many good fighters at his weight class that he could train with. Well, he's, he's still a baby, isn't he? This is yeah. his fifth fight. Yeah, so, of course, yeah. yeah. He is going to be a work in progress. But yeah. And do we know exactly what age is? Is he 25? Am I, I think, right? I no, think, no, I think so. He's not a baby. He's not a baby. He's 26. He's 26, yeah. 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 But there's no miles on the clock. Turn pro after just missing out on the Commonwealth Games, which was a big disappointment for him. But 
He doesn't. He says he admits it himself. He doesn't love the business, but he's he's got a boxing brain. That is evident. He, he's a smart technician in the ring. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he's had, his ring generalship has impressed tonight. He's never really given any ground. He's always just stayed on there, made sharp work for this. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot you can build on with Boris Grant. Yeah, I think there is, definitely. I mean, certainly. I mean, you can just, you know, you can see the ability, you can see the variety and, you know, different things that he's, that he's, he's trying things tonight. You know, you can see him trying things, you know. And that alone is is a very impressive trait, you know, he's... Um, he's really unloading here in this last yeah, he really is, minute yeah, of this he, fight as well. Oh, Got tagged he, again, he takes though. one there, Nick, yeah. But he's taking them when he's throwing the big punches, so that's when you are open. He's looking to try and get him out of there. Actually finishing stronger than he started as well. Which is the exact opposite of the John Doherty fight that we saw a couple of weeks ago, where yeah. Doherty just faded away and just said, OK, yeah, I'll just take the decision. Yeah, I'll just take the point. Yeah. Whereas, as much look, as the get, longer yeah. it's gone on, it's looked as if Crichton really fancies the stoppage. It was never going to come, and sure enough, it didn't. And yeah. uh, Boris Crichton will have learnt more in those six rounds than he will in all of his yeah. previous four yeah. knockouts. Yeah, you always say that, Nick, you know, and it's so true. It's so true. But it's so important to let the people know that, you know, you know the public and the fans that are watching that that is actually what's happening you're you're watching a fighter who is in a in a learning what, what would you call it, a learning process yeah. you know he's right at the start of the journey yeah you know there's not many and, and he, you know, he, yeah, he was an okay amateur but it's not like he was one of those amateurs that you you knew was destined for greatness as yeah. a pro so he's yeah. he's gonna have to learn well, ladies and gentlemen mr. McGuire will bring both boxers to the center of the ring what a contest let's hear it please for both our boxers We go to John McGuire, score totals 60 points to 55, still undefeated, Boris the Blade Greuter. Absolutely the right score, one every round. And Referee please, McGuire, ladies and gentlemen, keep the applause going for Daryl Sharp. Can't argue with that. Sharp's earned his money. Crichton's learned a lot. It's a win all round. Pleased to say I'm joined by Boris Crichton. We were just we were watching that there, mm. watching it back. How did it feel? It was good. Um, it was. I was kind of hoping to not go to six rounds, but at the same time, it was it was fun to be in there for that six rounds and, and actually get the time under the lights and the the chance to really go out there and show the skills and do what I wanted to do right right from round one all the way to round six. What was the expectation for you from you from Daryl? From Daryl himself, yeah. um, I don't know. I think he's quite a tough guy, and I think he, he builds a reputation of being a tough guy. So I think it was just laughing the whole way yeah, through. Yeah, I think he, he enjoyed it, and I think he wanted to see me come up um, swinging a little bit more to just again. I said that's his reputation. He is a tough guy, and he's a tough journeyman that wants to come out there and, and you know show that he can take what any sort of young prospects got coming um, his way and survive through it. And that he builds his he builds his career off the fact of that. So um, I just played the game and and did what I needed to do at the end of the day, you know? So I... Alex and Nick were, were watching you, of course, from the commentary position. They were very impressed with what you were doing, but they were saying it might be interesting for you to go around to maybe some other gyms in the UK to try and shift it up a little bit in terms of, of your style. For you, what would you want to improve on? Um, I think there's definitely a lot of things that I want to work on. Coming into this fight, um, I actually found out maybe about two or three days ago um, that he was a softball and I phoned my coach and I was like, you've been watching this guy for the last week and a half, you didn't think to let me know that he's a softball? And he said, like, oh mate, yeah, it kind of just slipped my mind. I was like, you're fine. But no, in going into the fight, I'm a natural orthodox fighter. I came in there and the game plan, I was like, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to fight, I'm going to spar him. Uh, we're going to have the fight for six rounds and, and I want to do it in that southpaw stance and see what I can do with my ability in that southpaw stance and because we've been working in there in the gym and I've been sort of practicing fighting in that stance for the last about three years now. So to be able to go in there for 90% of the fight to be in that southpaw stance I was happy I was quite, I was happy, and to be quite comfortable in it at the same time was really good. It, it must be quite difficult because when you are preparing for a fight like that and you get a last minute little change which is quite important information, how do you build, build a consistency in terms of your approach to a fight? Um, no, we kind of just stick to what we're working in the gym. So that shouldn't really vary too much. We've got a game plan and we just try and stick to it. If we need to refine it when we go in, then we do that. We, we, we do what we need to do to, to change it as we go along. Um, but the things that myself as a weakness that I need to work on, so it doesn't matter what his weakness is, it doesn't matter what mine is. And it can, if I can refine that and perfect that as much as I possibly can, 
then the weaknesses that I have now now become strengths. And if everything, if I can make everything as strong as I possibly can, then that is, it doesn't really matter if that changes or the fighter changes during the round because I can adapt to that. And that ability is what one of the things that we work on in the gym as well. And that, I think the difference between a really, really good fighter is that ability to be able to adapt to situations. We saw that tonight uh, with Cash Farouk, uh, and he just blew everyone away, didn't he? What did you make of it? No, Cash is fantastic, and he sets he sets the tone when he comes into the gym, and, and which is one of those things where I have to respect his attitude inside and outside and outside the ring. He's fantastic at what he does, and he showed that tonight, and he showed that over the last few fights. Cash came into his British Championships not being much of a knockout, um, or a hard puncher and just completely show that that's exactly what he can bring to that. He's got skill, he's got talent and he's got power to back it up as well. And when he comes in there, he's so one-minded and one shot one that when he steps in there, there's, you, you have to go to work or, or go, get put down you know, and, and the fight's going to end early if you, don't, if you don't give him that chance. Well, listen, Boris, thank you very much for your time speaking to us this evening. No, well done. Much. Again, another Scott who had a fantastic evening tonight. It was Craig Morgan in the super featherweight uh, fight. He was fighting Rafael Castillo. Let's have a look at what happens. Well, this one's scheduled for four. The teenager looking to go 6-0 and oh, on every round of every fight so far. Round one of this four-rounder, then Craig Morgan in the blue, Rafael Castillo, the Nicaraguan, based in Spain, in the black and blue. Interesting guy, Castillo, has been around a lot. I'm going to throw some names out there at you. Zelfa Barrett, Rhys Bellotti, Josh Whale, Jordan Gill, Lee Wood, Lucian Reed, wow. Ryan Dawn, Jordan McCorry. He's sharing with all of them. God. What they've got in common is they've either all won British or Commonwealth yeah. titles, or they're about to fight for British or Commonwealth titles. He's always been thrown in hot. Yeah, they wow. don't waste him on guys that aren't going anywhere. No chance. And another thing that all they've all got in common is they're all pretty bloody good fighters. Exactly. Yeah, every one of them. Yeah. Craig Morgan's always impressed me. He's always he's always looked fantastic, and um, you know he's got such good attributes for his fighting weight. You know he's so tall and rangy and. Uh, and he can punch. He can punch pretty hard, and uh, and he knows how to set up his shots as well. He he always puts himself in in situations where he knows he can get off his right hook or his you know or a heavy left cross. He's he's always impressed me. And he's he's really poker faced as well, Nick. You know, for a young fellow who um, you know has got not got a massive amateur background. He's um, uh, the kind of young fellow that is again trying to learn on the job, but. Uh, definitely got all the right attributes to be a, a successful professional. Well, he's already got Castillo's attention, that's for sure. Not many get Castillo out of there early. Jordan McCorry did. He got him out of there on a couple of rounds at uh, the Lagoon in Paisley nearly a couple of years ago now. McCorry going on to fight for the Commonwealth Super Featherweight title in a couple of months as well. So yeah. you've got to have a bit of a dig to get this fella out of there. old and uh, looks it as well yeah he does he looks about 12 doesn't he Is he? super fresh faced he, he he's the kind of 19 year old that yeah. has to take his id with him yeah exactly yeah not a single hair on his face good left hand counter as well castillo decided to come yeah. after him see if he can rough him up yeah after that, that after that shot it had to evade a little bit fire but done that with relative ease it's still looking really Comfortable and confident there. He's controlling the controlling the tempo of this fight, Nick, and he's certainly controlling the distance in which both guys are fighting it as well. He's um, looking really quite confident, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely the boss in there, isn't he? Yeah. But you would like to see him, and I'm quite sure you would like to see him um, be a little bit busier, just like trying to like put himself in a place where you know he's getting something back so he can you know he can open up his opponent and try and you know land something in note you know you can just see that kind of like you know like a tiger waiting to pounce kind of thing but you need to be a little bit busy and you need to create opportunities for yourself like you know and you know try and uh, try and draw something out of your opponent if he's just going to stand there and wait solid opening round then from the teenager Castillo smart enough to know when to make him miss, but he wasn't yeah. expecting that right hook yeah, to come back. Yeah, lovely shot right hook, yeah. And a good body shot to follow. Landing a good left cross as well, which was um, ignored by Castillo, and 
to steal the state of fire back You're up. right, Billy Nelson's jealous. Billy never looked that good. Yeah, Even never at 19, looked, uh, he never looked that pretty. No, no, no. no. Well, he nodded you were right. Speak for yourself, <laughs> immeasurable Englishman. Well, he relocated over to uh, Spain back in 2016. A bunch of those guys came together. Hasn't won a fight since, but always puts a good show together, Castillo. And of course, you would think for a 32nd consecutive defeat here. The, the, the question is, you look at the natural physical tools that the young man has got. He is so tall, as you say, got those long levers, that terrific reach. He's a southpaw as well. A tall southpaw who can punch is potentially a champion in the making. Oh, can he course, punch, though? Yeah. He does not have yes. a stoppage on his card. You said he can punch. Yeah, he can Why doesn't punch. he have a stoppage? You know, I've just I've seen him hurt so many people and they've went in defense of shells in the past. And, you know, it, it gets opponents' respect. And maybe he doesn't lay them out, but look at that. He certainly gets the respect. Nice and sharp. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Well. See what, you can now see what I mean, Nick. You know, yeah. he, um, he unloads with some fantastic shots on occasion. Maybe doesn't lay guys out, but he certainly gets the respect. Got uh, a response there from Castillo. Uh, nice work with that left hand there from Morgan. Yeah. You can always see when he does tag Castillo or hurt him because the uh, Nicaraguan comes flying back with a flurry of punches. That, that's the one thing that all those Nicaraguans from uh, Barcelona seem to do is if you catch them, they only respond one way, and that is with a flurry of activity of their yeah, own. Yeah, they always seem to come yeah. back with something, yeah. don't they? Yeah. They don't tuck up. Yeah. Again, the kind of classic example, you're not going to bully me tonight, you know, I'm I'm here and I'm competing as well, so, you know, be prepared if you're going to attack me, you're going to get something back. Good counter punch from Craig Morgan. Allowed Castillo to lead with the right hand and, you know, he came back with a lovely short, crisp left hand counter, which was really, really impressive. He, you know, just a little beat off there as well, you know, he's reading the timing of Castillo, but he's not quite coming back with a, with an accurate well-positioned shots. He can see the shot, but it's not quite coming off yet. Will it come off in time? Will he um, gradually get comfortable enough to feel like he can, you know, unload anything? You know, it remains to be seen, but we don't have a long time. Uh, it's not certainly it's not a 12-round fight, so. Again, nice counter. Again, Nick, very well timed, well picked counter punches. Yeah, drew the lead and punished him. He's clearly a left-handed southpaw as well, and by that I mean you do get a lot of southpaws that are actually right-handed. Their, their power, their power. I mean Scott Quick, is a classic example of that. He, he yeah. boxes out of a southpaw stance, but yeah. he's right-handed. Yeah. This guy is all about the left hand. And you also have Oscar De La Hoya and Marco Antonio yeah. Barrera. Yeah. You know you've got a number of fighters who um, are actually the other way around. with the right hand at the end of that little exchange there, Castillo, right at the uh, end of the round. Comfortable again here, Morgan, really nice there, just drawing that lead, making his man miss, and then catching him with the counter. Clever stuff this, did get through there. Castillo, but took a left hand for his pains as well, and that uh, that got him backing up briefly. three then just one more to go after this Morgan straight back now to business that's a nice start to the round as well another reason the stoppages tend not to come early for these guys as well is that you're you're starting off with four rounders yeah. it's just not enough time really to soften up a good capable journeyman like oh, Castillo no enough time at all at all Minimum eight rounds with these kind of guys. 
before you even start to make a dent. This is what made that Jordan McCurry stoppage of this fella in a couple of rounds all the more impressive. Doesn't happen very often. Morgan uh, continues to stalk and hunt his man. Castillo noticeably a bit more wary about trying to lead off now after he got yeah, counted a couple of times. Yeah. But would you say, Nick, that um, that Craig Morgan is probably not busy enough, maybe, to no, like... I would agree with that, 100%. Yeah, just to like, you know... And that was the first sign of impatience that we've seen. Yeah. Two, two huge swinging left hooks uh, that missed by a mile. If I was going to criticise Craig Morgan tonight, I would have to say that he's just not been busy enough for me. And I'm quite sure, I mean, I know I know for sure that Billy Nelson um, likes busy oh, fighters. Oh, oh. Good shot behind yeah, the ear. The right hand. Bit of balance there. And he's caught him. Oh, it's almost as if he heard you say he's not yeah, been busy but, enough for me because he's suddenly on the right bit hand. Yeah. You know, he's just got a good reaction there from a from a heavy right hook. Decent left cross, oh, good nice shot again. again. Put your foot on the gas a little bit. You're a young, fit guy, you know, you can... You know, less posing, less... And just a little bit more action, you know. Guilty of maybe admiring his work? Maybe a little bit. Standing back and... Oh, yeah, that was a good shot. Yeah. I'm, I'm the governor here, I'm yeah, in control. Yeah, yeah, that looked great. Put your foot on the gas, you know. Try and make a statement. Said that that's a good, good shot. Chose that really well. Switched the feet, evaded the jab put himself in a position. It was a little bit, the timing of the shot was a little bit lo like slow, but it was very well thought out. Oh, no need to be taking shots like that. No, that was... Uh, yeah. You hang your chin out yeah. like that, you're going to get Keep your caught. head out now. Absolutely. Keep your head out. That wasn't his finest moment. Yeah. Castillo doesn't care if there's a head clash and Morgan gets no. cut. Does not care in the slightest. I, I, I'll tell you one thing: when Billy Nelson plays the, the video back, he'll be focusing on that and saying, "What were you doing there?" Yeah, there will. There'll be things. There will be things, and those things I would imagine would be an activity. Um, hands too low after him, after finishing good attacks, leaving himself in a vulnerable in a vulnerable position. Would you agree with that, Nick? Or, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that was that cuffing right hand that just momentarily got him off balance but he's 19 years old of course he's gonna learn he's nowhere near Come the on. finished product Come nowhere on. near if, you, if, if people are going to be critical and billy nelson i'm sure will be critical you have to be because that's yeah. the only way they learn bit yeah. of elbow in there you see the bit yeah, of elbow sneaking nice. in there scottish after all surprised the head never went in as well but there you go Around 10 15 tonight, the uh, the main event. Cash Farouk, Dwayne Winters for Farouk's British Bantamweight title. Oh, the clock ticking on that one. The butterflies will be going in the dressing room right here. Good, I'm Craig liking Morgan. this from Craig, Craig Morgan. Morgan is definitely I'm looking liking to, uh, this. I think he got a, a talking to from Billy yeah. Nelson in that in, in between rounds yeah, there. I'm liking this. This is how Craig Morgan should have set out from round one. This is exactly how he should have set out. Got it. Now, he's saying that there was a clash there. He's saying there's a head clash, and he may have a point, but it's been ruled a knockdown. But he looks really unhappy here, and he came out flying at the start of this round, Morgan. Yeah. Completely different. Now, if he can get Castillo out of there, that's quite, well, a, that's quite an feet. impressive performance. Massive feat, and highly unlikely still, to be honest, but... This is how Craig Morgan should have approached this fight from round one, in my opinion. Why he was so cautious, I'll never know. He has all the attributes to, like, maintain this for four rounds. It's four rounds, Nick, you know. Yeah, well, Castillo doesn't want any of this, does he? He's complaining, moaning about everything to the referee. He's definitely shaken up. 
and uh, rather surprisingly Morgan's just dropped the pace again here that was nice picked a nice shot there but you'd feel Morgan especially in the last round just just really put your foot down here yeah I mean what is there to lose and you know right now for Craig Morgan zero you know this is fantastic this is what we would have liked to have seen for the very very first bell Good shot from Keg Morgan. Lovely shot, counter right hook. Inside the last minute then of this full rounder. And if there was any doubt at all, which there shouldn't have been, that knockdown will have... Uh, oh, that's a that's shot cool. stay on it, yeah. A looping right hand yeah. that Craig Morgan should never have taken. Switched off the docks. Well, the knockdown should make this a 40-35 scorecard for him. He's certainly won every round. And Castillo will be like an old racehorse now, knowing yeah, he's getting back to the not, stable. Even, even at the stage, he's not finding Castillo very easy to attack. No, like, exactly. Cast it's like, Castillo's come through his crisis. Yeah, he, he, there's three and far between. He knows he's nearly home. Yeah. But, yeah, a little bit rough and ready there from uh, Morgan. Don't necessarily say that's a bad thing. So the last few seconds then, and it's another win, clearly, for Craig Morgan, who continues his education with a comfortable four-round win over the Nicaraguan Rafael Castillo. Well, he's uh, been feasting on Nicaraguans recently, Jose Gaguiar in March, Elvis Guion in June. There's another one on the conveyor belt that uh, Craig Morgan has dispatched comfortably, Rafael Castillo on the wrong end of that one. So, well, uh, well just about ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee, Mr John Maguire, will bring together both boxers. Before we go to the scorecard, please show your appreciation as always. Both our boxers in the ring. Mr. McGuire's scorecard reads 40 points to 35. He remains undefeated from County. Craig Morgan. Confirmation then that Craig Morgan, the 19-year-old Southpaw and from County, improves his record to 6 and 0. Oh, that concludes. Well, that action, of course, finished about an hour ago. The night belongs to Cash Farouk, who Alex and I have watched. Earn himself a Lonsdale belt for keeps. You know what that feeling is like. He joins an exclusive group yeah. of Scottish boxers to yeah. own one of those. And he just looks so poised. And he was systematic and thorough tonight, yeah, wasn't he? He was so good. Like we spoke about this earlier, but he improves with every fight. And he's improving in areas where you want to see a young fighter improve. I mean, look at this. Like the precision of that body shot was perfect. The setup was great. His footwork was brilliant. You know, the, the punch picking, Nick. Uh, it's exceptional. This young guy can go on, in my opinion, to be a uh, possibly a world champion. It, 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 it's almost sort of ridiculous to be talking about a, a possible world champion, isn't it? But I'm with you. I, what I'm watching with Cash is a guy who's not making little steps. He's making giant yeah, strides. Yeah, every time. Now, this was an opponent. It was all wrong for Dwayne Winters tonight. No yeah. doubt about that. He, it was the wrong weight. It was the wrong time. It yeah. was the wrong everything. Yeah. But he still came in, Cash, and did such a spectacular number on him. Yeah. You just wonder where the where, where, where the ceiling is with this guy. Well, we've always got to remember what the British title brings um, to any, like, fight. You know, how much these guys want to win that belt, how much they want to defend that title it's it's just huge and for him to deal with that pressure tonight and and to execute that kind of like body shot in that fashion that he did was it was exceptional it was a, just a fantastic performance and one that was predicted by you well yes I mean, one, of, one of the rare <laughs> ones that was i can tell you that doesn't happen very often but uh, which is why i'm still working and sat next to you instead of living in the bahamas or something like that but here's a question where next we've had lee mcgregor here yeah. we've been talking about him we've talked yeah. to him as well now the fan in me says yeah. let's make that fight yeah, it has the to happen businessman in me yeah. says no let's leave that let's let these two guys develop in different directions yeah well i think it's maybe at that point now where lee mcgregor right like physically, we need to look at like the physical aspect that Lee McGregor is a massive bantamweight. He's a young fellow. He probably walks around in the region of 10 stone. 
you know, Thank so. you very much for that, guys. We have to try and get you two to stop talking for once. Listen, we hope you've enjoyed this evening. What a night it's been for Cash Furick in front of his home fans as well. We hope you enjoyed this evening as much as we did. Have a good one. See you soon. Bye-bye.